Hey everybody, it's Tiana and I'm back with a, another video. We're gonna get cozy. I got my silk robe on because this is gonna be a sit down video. I had some requests from the viewers on how I started my candle business and some things that I've done to get to this point. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And just a fair warning, I do have some cicadas or whatever in the background. I think that's what they're called. They're like these bugs that make a lot of noise out in my backyard. Um, but I'm using a microphone and hopefully that will help with the audio. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. So I created this PDF document to go with the video. I just felt the resources that I wanted to include were too much for the description box. Below I'll put timestamps and then I will also put um, in the description how you can get this free PDF with a lot more little details um, about each subject that I'm going to be talking about. Um, and it's going to have links you can click within the PDF um, and all of that business. So yes. Also at the end of the video, I will show you how to get the free productivity Trello board. I've done a video on this board before, which I'll link up in the cards, but I just want to give this to you guys as a reminder again, because I use it every day. It's something that I created and you can have it for free and it's going to help you with any kind of little handmade business not not necessarily just candles so without further ado let's jump into it okay so a little backstory on my candle business back in 2015 I was sitting at a boring desk job um, it was like your typical nine to five cubicle style I had my own cubicle um, it took me literally an hour to get back and forth to this job just because of traffic and um, all I pretty much did to get throughout the day was listen to podcasts and music and things like that. I remember just sitting at my desk and having this idea like what could I do to get out of here and I had an idea to start a candle business. I love candles. I've always really liked candles. I would always go shop around each week um, to find some really nice cute candles. So when I started, had this idea, I had no knowledge of how to make candles or anything like that. I just knew I wanted to do it. So I put in my two weeks notice, I quit. And it was about summertime when I started just experimenting with my candles. And so I'm going to start off with how to make candles. And this is not gonna be in depth. I don't have many videos or I don't have any videos on my channel about how to make candles but I will have some resources in here that I'm going to quickly talk about and there's more detail in here of course but some candle making youtubers that I really want to suggest to you guys is Stanley Handcrafted and Timber Ridge Gifts have some great candle tutorials but the main thing that I used to learn how to make candles was candlescience.com has some great tutorials on how to make candles so that was my main resource for how to make candles when I first started I made hundred percent soy candles but then my best friend was like okay candles are cute and all but they don't fill up my room and that tends to be a problem with hundred percent soy candles um, a lot of people do have a hard time getting a hot scent throw with those candles I had a hard time for the life of me I cannot get the scent throw with hundred percent soy that I wanted so I started going with a soy paraffin blend at this point and that's how I started my business with the IGI 6006 um, soy blend soy paraffin blend um, and that worked really well for me so I used that for a long time at this point I started really I had a Etsy store that I built up and then a personal.com that I built at the same time so my suggestion to you guys is don't worry about your personal.com in the beginning. I know it looks cute and all to have your little blah 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 dot com, but I will tell you that these websites do cost money to run every month. Um, and it just because you build it, people are not going to come flocking to your website buying your stuff just because you have cute things. That's not the case with um, websites just because there's so many websites and it takes trust people need to trust you they're not going to come to your website and buy something it's just statistics people are not going to do it um so i think i sold about four things on my personal.com the first year so i wasted a lot of money paying for that monthly fee 
Um, and I think Etsy had a few more sales than that, but nothing crazy. Um, but I will suggest to buy your domain, which is about $10 a year, just to lock in your business name, just in case someone has the same idea or name as you and they take that name before. Just go ahead and lock in your, do your domain when you start your business, but don't worry about the website part. So I would suggest starting on Etsy very low fees of course they have the built-in audience which is growing every year and they have a new ceo who has just been doing a lot to revamp Et etsy so it's only going to get bigger i have been liking the changes with etsy a lot of people have it so far it's been <laughs> working in my favor but um i was suggesting getting started on etsy so back to my story I had Etsy.com and my com and I was also selling on um, like markets since I was not going to a tra traditional job anymore I had time to go to the weekend markets and sell there which was a great experience for me um, but this was in the summer so if you're a candle seller be careful I live in Texas so maybe your state doesn't get as hot but selling candles in the summer I actually had to quit towards the end of summer because my candles were starting to melt at these markets um, so that's a little tip for you guys so it really taught me how to engage with customers how to talk about my product how to you know have a point of sale system how to set up tables so it really did teach me a lot in the beginning I just wasn't getting many sales online so let's roll around to October of 2015 or I can't remember if it's 2015 or it had to be 2015 when Amazon Handmade um, reached out to me so Amazon was coming out this new platform which was very not very similar to, but it was going to feature artisans that handmade their products so um, this was great because when I was unemployed I was actually selling on Amazon already I already had a seller account I already knew how to send my products into Amazon I was selling things like books and um, things that around my mom's house that she wasn't using so I was familiar with the Amazon handmade platform I was already making money on Amazon um, so I no problem was like sure I'm going to sell things on Amazon I know what I need to do to get people to buy on Amazon because they like that little Prime logo. Same with me, I like having the Amazon Prime membership. So my first thought when Amazon reached out to me was, I'm gonna get my products into Amazon Prime and that's what I'm gonna do. So during the whole Amazon handmade launch, we were in contact with some reps that kind of told us, you know, this is how you're homepage needs to look that you know you need to write your descriptions be expecting this and that so when it finally launched um, everyone had their nice little pretty sites they had featured artisans it's really cute and it's still up to this day you can still buy Amazon handmade products they don't just have that much advertisement for handmade that I noticed but I still do get sales there and I still am active there so um, during this time I was sending my sh my candles to Amazon warehouses because it was the perfect time it wasn't too hot it was fall winter time and this is where my main sales started coming in I noticed with Amazon I did not have to worry about promoted listings during this time I really wasn't paying for promoted listings anyway I would kept turning them on and off I would get scared like oh I don't want to spend too much money so during my first run of business I didn't really mess with promoted listings but with Amazon Handmade, just by having that Prime logo, I was making sales. I think I sold, while I was on the platform, about 400 candles. And the great thing about Amazon um, FBA is you send your candles in to whatever warehouse they want you to send them in around the country. The shipping is super cheap. I mean, I was sending like 20 pound boxes for $7. And then from there, the workers will check in your products and then you'll get a notification your products are checked in and then they can start selling so your your products will be available it'll have the prime two-day shipping logo for the customers and then the workers at Amazon will pick and pack your shipment send it off and they will even take care of customer service in case anything happens along the way so it's amazing you don't have to worry about customer service and shipping individually to each customer so I was living it up with Amazon FBA 
Um, so I was also doing Etsy Wholesale. So I had a couple clients through Etsy Wholesale. Now Etsy Wholesale is no longer available. I guess it just wasn't doing as well. I don't know. But um, so that is not, not something you can do now. But it did teach me what I needed to do for wholesale. It taught me how to make a line sheet. I didn't even know what a line sheet was, but Etsy walked you through. You need a line sheet for your wholesale clients. You need to sell your product at 50% off, but still make a profit. So it taught me how to price my products. Um, it taught me how to, you know, send invoices and make sure my product would get, how am I gonna ship this product to the store and get there in one piece and still look good. It taught me how to do that. So Etsy Wholesale, even though it's not around, was a great learning point for me. And I'm so glad I went ahead and jumped on that while it was around. Um, and my end goal is to wholesale. So all of everything that I do now, I hopefully one day want to wholesale my product to other stores. Hopefully that happens. Um, another thing I was doing at the time was called drop shipping. So drop shipping is essentially like you have your product on someone else's website, but they don't have your actual physical product in their warehouse. So for instance, house.com reached out to me and I joined their platform. And so whenever I would get an order through house, house would send me that order. Um, I would pack that order and ship it directly to the customer. So the people at house never saw my product or never had to, you know, interact with my product. Um, but they sometimes wholesale, I mean, drop shippers will send you like, um, package, you know, packaging to make it look like their brand and their warehouse. So I would have to put house, um, like stickers on it and all of this other things, or other things to make it look like a house product, which is understandable because a customer expects that when you order from a company for it to look like it came from that company. So um, drop shipping is cool. You also get probably about 50%. House is probably going to get 50%. So be sure to price your products accordingly um, for that. And uh, another, my last thing that I did during my first run of business, and I call it my first run because I closed my shop for a long time in between. So my first run, I went to a gifting event for it was BET weekend of 2016 and I remember it being summer so summer of 2016 I was invited to do an event and have my product in a gift bag for BET weekend in downtown Hollywood um, and it's great because my brother lives there so he was able to kind of help me through everything and come with me to the event so what I had to do was prepare, I think it was like 70 or 100 candles. They had to be like luxury. They had to look very nice so that they can be a part of the the swag bag or gift bag. And um, I even sent in some extras for them so they could decorate their tables and things like that. And it was really cool experience. It just, it was a little bit nerve wracking because I had to transport these candles in the summertime. And we actually, my husband and I, drove to these this event in LA we stayed out there with friends and um it was really fun I didn't know how to market myself so I didn't get much exposure from this event but it did teach me about future if I ever do this in the future what do I need to do to market myself better to because I'm not very good at um like making connections so who do I need to talk to how do I need to present myself? Um, I need to really work on those types of things when I'm doing um, like, you know, events and stuff. But it was an experience. I liked how the product turned out. Um, the event coordination coordinator was really nice and she enjoyed the product as well. So that was the last thing I did because when we came back from that trip, that's when I found out I was pregnant and it kind of turned into me getting ready for this baby and, um, Towards the end of my pregnancy, I decided, okay, I started just like slowing my shop down. I just really didn't care anymore about it. It wasn't my priority. Um, you know, it just, I wasn't creating anything new. So it's like, okay, I'm going to take two months off, have my baby and come back. Well, two months turned into nearly two years <laughs> because my first part of my, my son's childhood was really rough. He was a difficult baby. I just, honestly, I closed my shops. Like I legally closed them because I thought I'm not going to do this anymore. There's no way I'm going to be able to 
you know, raise this baby because at this point I was at home Monday through Friday um, and I had a job on the weekends. I got a job um, doing weekend shifts at a hospital so I can stay home with my business. And then once my baby came, I was like, okay, I can stay home with my baby, but there's no way I can do my business anymore. Um, so I closed my shops and then uh, it was October of 2018, which was last October. I just was getting more comfortable with uh, being a mom. I had my routines. It was, I was finding myself, you know, adjusting at this point. And it had been almost two years and I started thinking about my business again. Even though I legally closed my shop, I wasn't actively selling, but I still had my Amazon account open and I still had my Etsy shop um, running. I never closed th these things. I still had my Instagram going and I still had all of the things to make the candles. So I really had everything I needed. I just had to legally open my shop again um, because I really just had this urge to create this product. I just thought of it one day and I was like, whoa, I want to make these decorative candles. That's so it's gonna set me apart before I was making just your regular container candle, but I just had this idea that I needed to execute. <laughs> so I started doing um, like researching. There's not many people who make these types of candles. It is a thing, but not really a thing. So it was really just my trial and error, trying to figure out how to make what was in my head. So I finally made it. It was October, um, it was October 2018, the same month that I made this like Halloween candle. And it was, I called it a latte candle because it looked like a latte, but in my mind, I wanted it to have these like different elements that weren't really edible, but this thing was gonna look like food, but not really. <laughs> that, was, that was my big idea. Um, but this time around something really changed in me i don't know if it was like having a kid or what but i was just on my hustle on my grind i was like if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna go 100 percent. i'm gonna learn i'm gonna grow i'm going to be like you know just stuffing my mind with everything that i need to know to try to market myself better so then i started um learning listing how to list my products i had heard the term seo before but I just did not want to take the time to learn it honestly before it just it just I just didn't want to but this time around I was like I need to know what search engine optimization is I need to know so that I can sell my product so I started learning and one of the resources that I have in here is um, a youtuber who goes by fuzzy and birch and I started like inhaling her information um, her free information is amazing and I of course have the whatever um, link to her channel in the PDF and and all of that and you can of course just check it out but her free information just changed the game for me I learned how to take photos um, I learned what it takes to kind of sell to a customer you don't need just one photo to sell to a customer they want to see about five to ten photos of this Thing. they want to see it in your hand they want to see it in a lifestyle setting they want to see it up close and all these different angles so that's what I started doing and it takes a long time to take photos and edit for this you know for one product but in the end it's going to pay off um, if you just have to do it once and then put your listing up and then hopefully the sales start rolling in so I did that I learned about tags and um, all of that and I use tools i use paid tools to find tags on etsy which before i never used to do i would just come up in my head and be like okay this is a candle this is a blue candle it smells good and those were the type of tags i was using but that was totally not working for me or it's not going to work for anyone so i used um, marmalade for a long time it's what i first started with um, and it's specifically for etsy how to find tags and I have, uh, do I have videos? I have a video on Marmalade, I will link it above, but I am currently using another resource called E-Rank now. Um, and I just wanted to kind of see which one's better, Marmalade or, or E-Rank, that's why I switched. Marmalade is great, I just wanted to kind of test the waters with E-Rank also. So that's what I'm currently using, those tools. And back to photos, photos, are what sells the customer. The tags get the customer to your product, 
once they type into search, hopefully your product pops up with the correct and um, really lucrative tags. Now, customers are gonna look at the photos before anything, before they read the description, all of that. So you wanna make sure your photos are nice and crispy. Do you need expensive camera equipment for this? No, I do use a Canon T3i that I got like five years ago. I still use it to this day for product photos. Um, you can use your iPhone. Um, you can use a phone. It's not a big deal. But what you really want to do is edit the photo to look really crispy and nice and just professional. So for this, I do have a tutorial on how I take photos and edit them with a free software called iPicky. I do not have Photoshop. I do not pay for Photoshop. I used to back in the day and it works amazingly well for product photos. So that's what I use for product photos and just make sure to take a lot of photos and all of that. So that's another thing I changed about my business. And I noticed with those two things, I just noticed a growth, a spike in my business right when I first started. So I did all of this in October, November, I was getting orders, cool, great. The closer to December, which we all know December is the, the you know, high volume months, I was, I sold upwards of 200 candles on Etsy alone. Even in previ the previous run of my business in December, I didn't even sell anything. Like I remember it you know, Christmas coming and it was just like, I wasn't making sales. I was like, okay, whatever. But this time around, I was up until 4 a.m. I had to pay my mom one day to come and help me. I had to neglect Amazon because I just could not get to it. So I didn't even get to send products into the Amazon warehouse. Um, so I really hated that I missed out on that Amazon thing the first run, but I was just not prepared for these orders. So, I mean, and this was with free information and just me acting on that information. So I cannot stress to you enough about just doing more research and just taking it seriously. And I highly recommend Fuzzy and Birch. I do pay for her um, course and this is not sponsored at all. I paid for it with my own money, her paid course. So I am currently in her paid course and she her information is even more valuable there and she puts it together really well. But um, start off with the free information, of course, don't worry about having to pay anything. Um, so yeah, that, so now we're going to move on to pricing. So I'm not going to give you a whole bunch on pricing because I feel like I'm not qualified to tell you how to price your product, but I will tell you how I price my product. So I pretty much break everything down and then I put together the cost of the product. So um, whatever the cost is, let's just say it costs me $3 to make something. What I do is times it by two. So I'll do, okay, it's $6, um, you know, $6 and then I'll times it by two again. So it's gonna cost me $12, you know, for someone to buy this product and it costs me $2 to make it. Now that sounds like a ripoff. If you're a customer, you're like, it costs you $2, you're gonna charge me 12. Well, get this, you still have to worry about wholesale. If you ever want to wholesale, you're going to have to sell that product at $6 and still make a profit for you to live and run your business. You have to account for all of your website fees, your um, little transaction fees on Etsy, um, PayPal fees, any other fees, and then still make money for yourself. So don't feel bad about your pricing. Charge what's fair to you and the customer. Um, I was bad about this in the beginning. I kind of like would standoffish about raising my prices because I felt it wasn't fair to the customer, but you need to be fair to yourself as well. And if you're put, putting out a quality product, people will buy it from you um, and support your business. And just compare yourself to other makers in your niche and just kind of see what they're charging as well. Um, and for me, I also put in, um, I tag in the, shipping cost into my um, candles as well. So my candles come out as $20, which if you look at other sellers in my niche, I kind of feel like I'm undercharging because they'll have like a regular container candle for like $18 and then they'll charge shipping too. But I don't know how their business runs. I don't know what they, the type of money they need to run their business. But for me charging $20 and then I give the customer free shipping is fine with me. 
In the summer, my shipping, I do charge for shipping because I do package my candles for summer shipping. So I will buy extra products like ice packs and thermal mailers. And I think this is so great because the way um, Etsy is working right now is if you have free shipping on your product, you're gonna get a bump in the search. So Etsy wants to show customers free shipping. They wanna compete with Amazon. And so I knew, I remember hearing this in a podcast and I was like, okay, how can I do this? So I started um, tagging shipping into my product. And then so I'm able to offer free shipping. And of course, like I said, in the summer, I think I, char I charge $4 shipping. So my product is $20 plus $4 shipping in the summer, just so that I'm able to get that candle to the customer without it melting, um, you know, and all of that. So that's another tip on pricing. Just be aware of all of your charges or, and your supplies, materials, really break it down so that you know that you're um, making money and all of that jazz. So now that we talked about pricing, let's move on to another aspect about money, which is keeping track of your finances. And I started doing this when I restarted my business and it's been great because it really gives you a view of your expenses, what you're making, what you're spending. And it really helps with your taxes as well because at the end of the year, they're gonna wanna know like all the numbers, <laughs> how much you made, how much you got in materials, how much you spent to run your business and you want to keep track because you want to deduct things like I bought the camera that I'm talking to you guys on right now. Um, I can deduct that because it's for business purposes. It's for YouTube. It's for pictures and all of that. So you want to keep track of these things and to do that you need a separate account. So I suggest right off the bat I don't care if you think you're a small seller, if you haven't made any sales, you need to get a business account right away. Because once you start buying your materials, that's already business money right there, even if you haven't made a sale yet. So go ahead and open up a business account. Um, for my business account, I use this um, online banking company called Azlo, A-Z-L-O. And I chose this company because, or this bank because it is uh, they don't have monthly charges which a lot of business banks have monthly charges and um, you're able to pretty much run everything that you need to do as a small business you get a debit card um, you can pay with uh, you don't get physical checks so that's one of the cons you don't get a physical checkbook but you can actually go on and um, request to send a check to somebody and then they'll get a physical check in the mail and there's a couple applications that you can use to help streamline those finances which I would recommend QuickBooks so I have a link in here Etsy does have an Etsy for QuickBooks um, so if you're an if you have an Etsy shop it's five dollars a month I don't know the normal price for QuickBooks but I signed up with like the Etsy link and it's five dollars a month and I also have um, a Excel document for my inventory and for my um, finances, expenses, income that I bought from an Etsy shop. And they put together like these amazing documents that do all these cool things and show you all these stats. And I have that shop link here. It's called Paper and Spark. As a backup, I have QuickBooks, which is $5 a month. And that's what I've been doing, keeping track of inventory, finances. It sounds like a lot. But I'm going to tell you towards the end of this video how you can make sure you get these things done. So now that we've got, we've covered candles, how to make candles, listing things online, taking photos, how to price your products and pricing products, business tips, um, such as finances. I just want to give you guys my final tips. So these are things that I've learned along the way to help me do all these things because I'm a mom of a toddler. I have a business. I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> I have all of these things. I have a house that still needs to get cleaned during the daytime. Um, my husband does his cleaning at night, but I still got to clean during the day as well. So I want to tell you about how I do all of this because it sounds overwhelming. Honestly, it is overwhelming. So my tips for you guys is to plan. I actually have a digital planner that I have in my iPad where I plan things out. I plan my week out. Um, what am I going to be doing each week? I have Trello boards where I plan things out. And that's why I wanted to give you guys this Trello board for free because it really helps me to see at a glance 
what I need to be doing. It helps me brain dump. It helps me um, plan my content. It has like an order order thing where if I run low on something, I can just type it into the order column. So this is so freaking helpful, you guys. Um, I would suggest downloading it. Planning is a big one. Just keep planning. And then also I learned this recently was to batch your tasks together. So before I would just like make one candle and then I would take the photo for that one candle and then put it up. But what I've started doing now is I just brain dump a whole bunch of ideas into my Trello board and then I pick a few things that I want to create. Then there's one day where I'll put in my planner, I'm going to put batch candles. So I'm going to sit there and batch three candles that night and then call it a night. The next day I'm going to go ahead and take photos for those three candles while my camera's out, while the equipment's out, take my photos, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to the next day do my research for the keywords that I want to use using Marmalade or E-Rank, whatever you choose to use. So at the end of the week I'm putting up three candles instead of one candle. Be consistent. So like I said, if you plan on releasing, you know, two products a week, just make sure you stick to that. And then so you'll start seeing progress and all of that. Just be consistent. Um, something that I learned that was so helpful was done is better than nothing. Quit worrying about being perfect. Um, I'm sure customers, as long as you have a really great quality product, that little thing that bothers you, the customer's probably not even going to realize whatever it is. So done is better than perfect. Just make sure you get things out there. I mean, don't slop them together, but just just don't worry about being perfect all the time. Another thing that I want to touch on is having multiple streams. Don't just rely on Etsy to make your money. So you can be really successful on Etsy. I'm not really successful on Etsy, but it's very possible to have a successful Etsy shop where you work full time just from that Etsy shop. That's cool and that works for people. For a lot of us, including myself, um, that's not something that I can rely on. So I have the Amazon Handmade, I have my Etsy shop, I just launched my .com, and of course YouTube is going to be another stream for me once I get um, rolling on YouTube. Um, just having all of these different ideas for multiple streams don't worry about them all at once of course you need to have baby steps and start off small but don't just put all of your eggs in one basket forever just always have that in mind that you're going to need multiple streams of income to hopefully make this your full-time job and just to let you guys know etsy and my business is not my full-time job yet but i do want to put it out there that i am trying to make it my full-time job so I'm not one of those crazy success stories where I made like half a million dollars overnight. I'm still working my part-time job um, on Saturday, Sunday, and then grinding through the week on my Etsy shop. So I'm here with you guys. I'm here. I am not some successful person yet, but it is one of my goals. And these are some things that I am learning along the way. And hopefully to I want to pass this on to you guys so it'll help you guys uh, quicker <laughs> so you don't have to learn the hard way like me. Um, so the last thing I want to leave you guys with is to set goals. So I didn't ever used to do this, but I find that setting goals, and I usually do this in my Trello boards, I set goals and it's really awesome when you're able to check that goal off and see the next goal and work towards the next goal because then you can kind of visualize what you need to do to get that goal rolling. And um, it's really helpful and I'm going to continue to set goals. I'm really glad I started doing this. But yeah, those are my tips for you guys and I really hope this video helped you guys if you're learning, if you're wanting to start a candle business or any type of little handmade business. Again, here is the little thing you can download PDF that I created for you guys. It's like seven pages long. It has some links for you to click, some um, just some other little tips that I'm just not able to get to in this video because it's already a long video. Um, but if there's anything else you want me to elaborate on, of course you can put them in the comments down below and I will make a video on that for you guys. But next video is going to be a studio vlog, which I'm going to go film right now because I'm filming two videos in a day, batching, I'm telling you, batching things. So until next time, bye y'all.